Now, I don't know about you, but my favorite place to go and uh, either window shop or actually shop is places like Woodcraft, which is my all-time favorite place to go. Uh, I go online to Rockler. I go into the store at Lowe's. I go into the store at um, Home Depot, uh, Lumber Yards. I love all those places. I can't buy everything I see, though, because... We do have to admit that if we're a hobbyist, this is an expensive hobby. It's expensive to get in, it's expensive to maintain, um, and it's expensive to just get the material right now that we need to build things. Hardwood is expensive. Sheet goods are, you know, almost as expensive as they've ever been if it wasn't for a couple years, la a couple months last year. But there's one place that you can go where you can get things for your shop that you will use every day and save yourself some money. That's at a dollar store. Stay tuned and find out what I got today. Here we go. This is my takings from my particular dollar store today. Now, in certain areas of the country, the dollar store is now the dollar 25 store. That is annoying to say, it's too long, so we're gonna stick with the dollar store. Plus, there's also places that still have things for a dollar. Dollar General has a bunch of dollar stuff. Um, so everything in this bag was a dollar 25 or less, and if this was two months ago, it would be a dollar or less. Everything in this bag is stuff that I use every day, or almost every day, every day that I'm building. Some of it may apply to you, some of it may not. Some of this you may already have, and some of it may you already know. So I'm gonna give you the 10 things I bought today, plus a couple bonus things that I get there, because why not? Now, if you watched one of my previous videos about the must-haves when it comes to accuracy, I talked specifically about how much I use my marking knife, but, that's just for marking. 90% of the writing that I do in my shop is either writing down measurements for later, it's rough cutting. So, pencils. Pretty simple one, number one, pencils. I get all my pencils from the dollar store. Uh, here's 24 pencils for a dollar. They sharpen. In here, I lose them, I break them, I break the tips off. There's really no point in spending anything more than a dollar for pencils. So use a lot of pencils like I do, make sure you get pencils when you're there. Thickness gauges. Now, I did not get this at the dollar store, but the reason why I bring this up is because yes, you could get thickness gauges to measure distances, um, small distances. These I use this and I got these specifically so I can make my cross cut sled, right? Did not need to buy this. I'm glad I have them, but Glad I have them and needing them, especially when you start off, is two totally different things. I don't need these. I could have done the same thing with playing cards. And I just bought these. I use the playing cards to, these are uniform thickness, so they're fantastic for shims. They're also good for, um, like I said, I could use it to adjust my fence to get it perfectly square. If you leave them in between the fence and the back fence, then so be it. I mean, it's a playing card. Who cares? They're a dollar for, you know. They're two decks for a dollar, so that's a uh, uh, 104 for a dollar, right? Um, what these are fantastic for, and this is nothing new under the sun. If you've ever watched New Yankee Workshop, if you've ever watched uh, this old house, pretty much any of the YouTubers that build cabinets, Bourbon Moth, anything like that, they use these as spacers so you can space uh, the amount of space you want in between the doors or the cabinet fronts. Uh, these are fantastic for that. Always have a couple packs of these. You'll always use them, you'll always lose them, you'll always leave them in places that you're trying to shim. No problem, always go back to the dollar store and get more. Next up on the list of things I got today, water bottle, spray bottle. I actually have two of them, this is my old one. This one is just water. I use this to pop the grain on pretty much anything that I'm uh, finishing, which means I use this for everything that I'm finishing that's not plywood right so if you don't know what pop the grain is what that means is i use this basically on cutting boards mostly when i uh, 
for that. Uh, you sand from, you know, wherever you start me at 60, 80, 100, 120, 180. Then after I've done my 180 sanding, I spray it with water. It lets me kind of see what it's going to look like. And then it pops that grain out. So then I'm able to let it dry, sand it again. It sands off that grain. I start from 100 there. And then I bump my way up to whatever it is I feel like doing, which is usually about 220. And then I finish it. I bought a second one today. This one is going to have water with a little bit of vinegar in it. Another way to save money in your shop. If you did not know this, I have actually done plain restorations, busted off rust with just vinegar. And guess what else is at the dollar store, even though I didn't need it today? That's right, vinegar. You get some vinegar, you put it in here, and then I can use this to spray down all my metal surfaces, uh, surfaces uh, to keep the rust off of there. I could use it to clean off my planes all that good stuff. Now let's talk glue. Glue bots. Love them. Now I ended up with four of them because I really didn't know any better. Now I do like them. I use it all the time and I have two of them. I have one that's kind of nipped off right here and then I got one that's nipped off right here, right? And then I end up buying two more thinking I would need them. I haven't used them yet. Now once again, loving something and needing something are two different things. One dollar. That's the thing, right? One dollar. And this was actually one dollar. Um, now, the good thing about these is that you could buy multiples, right? This is anywhere between seven to ten dollars, I think. I, I don't remember. This is one dollar. Now, the good thing about this is that uh, you could use this for both glue and epoxy. So let's say you have a board or a piece of wood and it looks like this, and you want to put some epoxy in there, either a different color, same color, clear. All you want to do is either strengthen it or if you're trying to make it look pretty, right? This is the perfect way to, you can you can even stir it in here because yeah, you can take the top off, put the stir in there, spin it around. Um, you could stir it into one of the fancy tubs that they sell and then just pour it in here, but this is the perfect way to get it from from there to there. Now, this also works well with glue. Now, being different than a glue box, these are more of a wham bam type thing. You're gonna wanna either keep them clean uh, because these do not have the same seal as these, which is why I love these. I mean, I've left my glue in there uh, for days and weeks and even one of them for months, they didn't dry at all. These, they will start to dry a little bit. So I recommend these mostly for epoxy, but also for wood glue, as long as you do take the time to make sure that the tap is on, this is closed, and this is gonna sound a little strange, but put a little thread tape in there to even get most of the air out. So $1, that's what we're looking at. Okay, now today I was making some doors uh, for the thing behind me right now, making it out of walnut to match everything else that was in here. And when I do things, I always try to make steps with them. The step that I was supposed to do when I made this was to make sure that I set up a stop because I did not want that to happen. I did not make my note to make the stop. And as you could tell, I basically routered all the way through. So you will see this on the bottoms and tops of the doors. Now, this is shop materials, shop equipment, so I'm not gonna be too upset about it, um, but that's what happened. Now, the reason why that happened is because I had ran out of post-its. And how much were they? That's right, a dollar. I put post-it notes when I am making steps. Now, this is something you may be too advanced for that. You don't need to, this is second nature. But if you are brand new or intermediate, or if you're just like me and I get so excited about the step that I'm thinking about that I forget about, well, there's a step before that. I put post-it notes on pretty much all of the big machines when I uh, before I start a process that says, did you do this? check this. So if I had my post-it note on my router fence, I would have put stop question mark. And then it would have reminded me when I went over there, I forgot to put the stop. I ran out of my dollar post-it notes. And that's what actually got me to the dollar store and got me the idea of making this video today. So post-its, fantastic to have. Definitely get them. Now these are going to go together. Popsicle sticks. Now they're craft sticks. 
This is what we do in here is we create craft sticks. Of course, that would make sense, right? Now, what I use those for is with my wax paper. Wax paper, this is not a kitchen. The reason why I have wax paper is because these two things are the perfect way to mix your sawdust and glue. Now, I have melamine tops. Not everybody does. Or even if you do, you may not be able to assemble where those are. Or you might be working out of your shop. Or you might just be in a position where you don't even think about it. So even on my tops that are able to basically be glued on, I use my wax paper, which I ran out, which is why I had to get that too, and my popsicle sticks. Now, this is also gonna bring me to another thing that I get from the Dollar Tree, which is containers. I They have a bag of these. You can get uh, 12 for a dollar. And I use these for my sawdust. So, like I said, we got our wax paper down. Then we get our glue. We put a bunch of glue right there. We get our cherry sawdust. Oop, that didn't, did not mean that to happen, but that's okay. And then we stir it all together with our popsicle stick. Now, I really did way, put way too much in there, but that's okay. So we're gonna stir all that around. Now, not only does this stir it all together, which means it saves my finger, which in turn really just saves my clothes because I never let it stay on my finger. Um, I'm also able to put it in there like that. You can look at that, see? I also use it to kind of scrape it and then bam, now you got it all filled. Now, this may not match exactly, but that's okay. This is just, I wanted the contrast for, so then you wipe it down and now you have it filled. Of course, I'm going to go ahead and take um, a sander to this, but popsicle stick, wax paper. Now, uh, because I have extra, the sawdust, excuse me for throwing it away. That's, that's, that's money right there, really. But see, wrap it up throw it out or if you're going to be doing multiples you leave it there and then you can throw the popsicle stick away so this next one here the fact that i had to see it, someone else do it on a youtube video for me to realize why didn't i think of that makes me question my own intelligence but straws anytime you glue boxes together drawers together which basically everything we do is some sort of box there's always going to be an inside joint that's going to be hard to get the glue out of these things are beautiful for that. It's a dollar. Um, I get uh, 80 straws in here. I can use one straw usually per per box, um, especially if you take the time to clean it out. If not, you can even if you just use one per joint. You got 80 joints in here too. All right. So those are the 10 things that I promised you, but I also promised you a few extra notepads. I like to write everything down real time with my notepads and with my post-its. The notepad is so I can write down notes like that reminded me that I needed to get the stuff from the dollar store today. This is where I write down the measurements so I'm not writing it on my melamine top. Uh, I use these all the time. Coarse salt. I keep that because you're going to use coarse salt when you're breaking down rust on certain things. Uh, like I use this. I had got this specifically from the dollar store so I can, um, uh, when I was refurbishing some planes that had a lot of rust on it, um, it works really good doing that. Rubber bands. When I make my 3D coasters and cut and board, I used a bunch of rubber bands with that. Um, they're really good at taking large like stick stock and when you're gluing it together because it's very and, and clamping awkward you know octagonal or any kind of hexagonal kind of shape clamping can be very difficult this makes it a lot easier you just wrap it around uh, make sure you get many sizes of rubber bands but rubber bands are great to have almost everyone needs one of these now you're not going to want to get one of the actual uh, utility knives at the dollar store they're not that good but if you just need replacement blades you can get those at the dollar store as well. 
All right, so there you have it. I went to the dollar store today, got a bunch of stuff that I'm gonna use every day in my shop. So maybe next time you're at the dollar store or some kind of dollar store, you're at the front part of Target where my wife always stops to look at the stuff that's like a dollar or two dollars, take a look around. You may find something that you could use in your shop. You may have the next big idea, something that no one else has ever thought of. Now, for me, most of the stuff that you saw today, I saw either by watching it on YouTube or learning from other people, things like using straws it never even occurred to me. So if you are new to woodworking, this may be like, oh, I didn't even think about that. If you've been around a while and you've been doing woodworking a while, you may actually be like, you know what, I used to do it that way. I found a different way. If there's anything else that you guys know, please leave it in the comments. I would love to learn from you and I'm sure everyone else would love to learn as well. All right, once again, this is Jesse at Generations Woodcraft. I want to thank you so much for spending your time with me today. Now, just a note here, my next goal um, is to get to 1,000 subscribers, and we are slowly getting there. If you are subscribed now, I want to thank you so much for doing that and being part of the journey with me. If you like what you see and you are not subscribed, please like the video or subscribe. And lastly, if you want to see some really kind of out there, you know, reels and stuff like that, um, you'll find me on Instagram and Facebook, and I will put the links down in the description. You have a fantastic day and we'll see you next time.